It's Father's Day and we're talking about whether dads have authority. So you're saying you have authority then? Oh no, I, I don't. Sorry. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Kamsa Connect, your weekly worship service from Cambridge Salvation Army here in the UK. It's Father's Day and the theme we've chosen is one of the most well-known and best loved lines that dads love to say, Because, because I, I said, said so. so. And we're in Luke chapter 7 looking at an interesting story where a Roman centurion who was not a follower of Jesus accepts the authority of Jesus. Excellent. Well, as you might expect on Father's Day, this episode of Kamsa Connect features the dads of the Kamsa family and later lots of them will help us take a humorous look at things dads never say. We've also got a word of testimony from Captain Rob Simons of Histon Salvation Army and our male voices are back with a song that's, well, old but gold. Definitely. And Leanne, tell everyone the latest with the Office Desk Saga. What's happened? Well, nothing. Ah, oh, so the parts didn't come. Right then. OK, well, everybody, more desk-related drama next week. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get on with our worship and we're going to sing a song that calls us to worship God, our Heavenly Father. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Thanks for that good sing, and please join us in a short Father's Day prayer as the words appear on screen. Loving, Loving Lord, Lord, we thank, thank you for the gift of good dads and, and everything they do for us. Help them to have patience when we're difficult, wisdom when we can't see the way, strength when we need comforting, and love at all times, so that through them we get a little glimpse of how you feel about us, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. And God bless all of you dads and those in the role of a dad everywhere. Definitely. God bless you and enjoy this special day. Well, shortly we'll have the update from Norman, the online offering and today's Bible reading from Luke chapter 7, which will be read by one of the dads of the Kamsa family, Richard Long. First, though, we asked a colleague officer of ours, Captain Rob Simons of Histon Salvation Army, to talk about living life under the authority of God. Here he is. There have been many people who played an influential part in shaping my life. And one of them is none other than Thomas the Tank Engine. 
You see, Thomas was well known for being a really useful engine. He wasn't the brightest or the best, or the biggest or the strongest. He wasn't the oldest or the wisest, and he couldn't carry as heavy a load, and he'd often get into all kinds of scrapes and escapades and make mistakes. But he was pure of heart. Often, Thomas would take on jobs that only he could do, or that he'd been specially made for, and his passion, that was easy to see, to give all that he could with whatever he had to serve the purposes and plans of his master, Sir Topham Hatt, the controller. Well, my life has been a little bit like Thomas reflecting. Growing up, not always the loudest or boldest or strongest or wisest, often someone who really had to work hard to achieve success when for others it appeared to come more naturally. And yet through Christ's strength and power in my life, here I stand. Why? Because much like the centurion who displayed great faith and respected authority, I came to the realisation that I was under the authority of God and I wanted to serve his purposes in his kingdom in heaven with whatever I had, in whatever way I could, and to be a blessing to him and to others. A song that always challenges me is All That I Am. And the chorus says it all. All that I am, all I can be, all that I have, all that is me. Accept and use, Lord, as you would choose, Lord, right now today. You see, William Himes had it right when he said that life has no purpose unless it is yours. Life without you has no goal. All that fulfills me is doing your will, knowing that you're in control. We are indeed grateful to Captain Rob Simons for his word of testimony. There are valuable lessons to be learnt from the simplest of examples, aren't there? Hello everyone. It's good to have the opportunity to be sharing some information with you once again. Yes, I'm going to start with the progress of our building scheme and the excitement is starting to build as we are now moving towards completion. You can see this for yourselves as our picture gallery is constantly being updated and there is a link for you to view these in the video description below. I am pleased to report that most of the furniture has now arrived on site, but with or without the necessary fixings to put them together. Also, the AV equipment is now beginning to arrive ahead of the planned installations in July. But don't forget that when our new facilities are ready, we shall be having our first meeting back in our hall on September the 11th. The countdown has begun. This week sees the summer solstice, the longest day of the year on June the 21st. So it's all downhill now to Christmas, which, if you are interested in countdowns, means that there's only 27 weeks to Christmas. Well, let's face it, Christmas items will soon be on sale in the supermarkets, won't they? I always make you aware that we produce our own monthly prayer leaflets, which are available to you all. But did you know that the Salvation Army also produce a booklet called Prayer Matters? The July to December edition is now available and is available in many formats, and we have included a link in the video description below should you wish to obtain a PDF version. On Sunday the 17th of July, there will be live streaming for the commissioning of the Messengers of Reconciliation, which will be at 10.30 in the morning, and then of the Territorial Celebration Meeting at 3 o'clock. On that particular Sunday, we will not be sharing in worship at the barracks, as many of our congregation may actually be there. But until that date, I would remind you that you can come along and share in worship with us in person at the barracks every Sunday at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you. Thanks for watching, and we are now going to give to the Lord in our offering. Jesus.
Today's reading is from Luke chapter 7. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was ill and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard that, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Amen. Well, thank you, Richard, for bringing us today's reading. And thanks to you all for supporting Cambridge Salvation Army in the online offering. If you didn't get opportunity to use your smartphone that time by scanning the code, just feel free to watch uh, this episode again later or check the video description below for other ways to support. Well, it's almost time to hear from our male voices and then examine that story of Jesus and the centurion a little more closely. First, though, the bit you've all been waiting for. Here are some of the Kamsa family dads with things dads never say. I don't care what time you come back. You can stay as late as you want. I don't care if you pass all your exams. When you go out tonight, could you make sure you leave all the lights on, please? And could you make sure to leave the front door open while nobody's in, please? I don't care if you get a job this summer. Would you like to borrow my brand new car? Would you like to borrow my new credit card? 
Life is always fair. I don't care if you get a detention. I really like that boy. I think you ought to go out with him. Yeah, sure. Half time in Tahiti sounds like a great idea. In fact, I think you should ask him out right now. You know, when I was their age, life was easy. Really easy. I have absolutely no idea where we are or where we're going. I really don't think we spoil our kids enough. We should be giving them exactly what they want. You're going to jump 20 feet to the ground? That's an excellent idea. How come you haven't got any ear piercings yet? To be honest, Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Yes, we're lost. We are completely lost. I know we had a toilet stop 10 minutes ago, but can we stop again now, please? Doesn't anyone want to know if we're there yet? What? You have homework to do tomorrow, and you're only starting it now? Congratulations. I just love it when the kids talk back to me. And please remember, if you need anything in the early hours of the morning, feel free to wake me up. I got more than enough sleep last night. While you're 16 now, you pretty much know everything. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with our adult children. I really enjoy repeating myself over and over again. What more sport? No thank you. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish Strictly Come Dancing was on. Hooray! More homework to correct. Whatever your friends do, do the same. Well, you could always go out with that guy with the motorbike. He always makes me want to shout, Hallelujah! And if you could make sure you play on your video games before you do your homework, that'd be great. When I'm talking to you, please look at your phone. No means maybe. Here you are, see if your mum can open it. Hey, turn that music up a bit. Yeah! Hey, why don't you bring that ball inside and play with it? Mmm, oh. dirty nappies. I'm sorry, son. I don't know any good jokes. Sometimes hard to bear with problems most distressing. Every day a day of care with heavy burdens pressing. Need in strength to battle on, yet you find it fled and Under a 
Thanks, fellas, for reminding us that God cares for us and ultimately is the one who is in all and reigns over all. You know, God's authority is something the Roman centurion in our story today seemed to recognise very clearly. As a military man, he knew exactly how authority worked and quite obviously he had heard of Jesus and recognised his power. He had no doubts that Jesus' orders would be obeyed and that if Jesus said, let him be cured, the slave would be cured. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus was amazed by the centurion and held him up as an example, saying to the crowd around him, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. He was not a Jew and not someone Jesus' followers would have thought as quote unquote one of us. Yet the centurion was a shining example of faith because he was someone who totally believed that God was in charge. You know, the Bible records the lives of other people who shared this view that God is in charge too. In the New Testament, for example, we learn about Paul, the man who was once a prosecutor of Christians and who went about breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord until the day Jesus spoke to him in a flash of blinding light. His life changed forever and he started spreading the good news of Jesus all around the Mediterranean where he founded the first Christian churches. Paul knew very well that God was in charge of his life and no one else. He described himself bluntly as Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul recognised that following Jesus was about letting God be the boss, no matter how some people reacted. He asked some of the unfaithful followers, am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I was still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. He knew the importance of seeking God's approval and accepting what God says, even when the answer might be sometimes, because I said so. Because part of following God is submission to the fact that he sees all, knows all, and therefore can be trusted. Sometimes there's no point arguing with God. We need to accept him saying, because I said so. So then Paul and the centurion in our story 
both set as an example to follow. They remind us that God is in charge, and even if, like the centurion, we feel that we are someone who doesn't deserve God's attention, our job is simply to accept his authority over us. On this Father's Day then, may we all remember that God our Heavenly Father loves us and cares for us all, that he knows what he's doing and that he alone is in charge. That means all of us just have one thing to do and that is to trust him, our Heavenly Father. Please join us in a prayer. Lord God, we pray you will help us remember that you love us and that you know what you are doing and that you are in charge. Like the centurion, may we always listen for your word and do your will. And all powerful God, we ask that as we live for you in the world, you will help us to trust you because you know all things and see all things and help us to follow your instructions, never forgetting that you are in charge. In the name of Jesus, your son, we pray. Amen. Okay, everyone. Well, it's time to wrap up now. So once again, thank you for joining us today. And thanks to all the amazing dads who took part and dads everywhere for all you are doing. May God bless you today. We're back next week when we're in the next bit of Luke chapter 7 and thinking about offering a helping hand. We'll have a story for the children, a flute solo and some music from our senior band as well. In the meantime, do say hi in the comments below and of course please like this video if you did and click subscribe and the bell icon to stay up to date with all our content. All right, well let's conclude our Father's Day worship with a song that reminds us all of the faithfulness of God our Heavenly Father. Until next time everyone, keep safe, keep well and keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you. Lord, I come before your throne. Worship and wander around.